www.shopabrush.com and I am working on a custom cover for the underneath um, hood of a car. So this is a, a Nissan R35 cover and uh, I guess it's, I think it's called the under bonnet cover. And uh, I just want to do a quick tutorial and uh, do the full one from the video. So I just want to explain a few things. Uh, what I'm using is an Iwata airbrush. It's a HP a CH airbrush. And I'm um, layering a layer of black on here first. So even though, uh, just uh, first thing, even though it's already black, if you add, uh, I'm using jet black right here. It's a nice, deeper, richer black from uh, Createx Colors. Um, it, it lays down a nice tone and uh, makes it easier to layer other colors on top of it. So, a lot of times uh, if you start out, like if you see uh, something that's already painted, um, a lot of people don't think to paint over it again, but uh, definitely uh, do that because it lays a really nice base and foundation. So that's uh, just, you know, just a good tip. And uh, this is the Grim Reaper, man, death. Uh, so a lot of uh, automotive stuff has a lot of skulls and, and uh, Grim Reapers and things like that. So I thought it'd be good to um, really have a really cool design for this one. And uh, they gave me the reference image and everything, so I'm just working off of uh, what the customer gave me. But it's a really cool image. Uh, and this car is super dope. It's a R35. I'm not really too knowledgeable about cars, but I'm really learning. And uh, so what I'm doing here is adding a layer of opaque. Well, it's a layer of white. So it's a layer of opaque white, and uh, it lays down the darkest whites first. Um... And uh, I'm just pretty much outlining it, kind of like a coloring book, filling it in, and then outlining around the outside edges. And I drew everything on here with a colored pencil. So this is a white Prisma color pencil. I like using these for black, um, you know, on black designs because the oil is really smooth and it lays them nice, uh, sharp, and you know, nice lines, and they're easy to see. So I'm adding white here, and this creates the highlights for the main subject. <clears throat> and uh, so looking at the reference photo, the light comes from the front, you know, facing the Grim Reaper. So it's pretty much the light source is the top down and then the bottom. There's these like kind of like, uh, I guess you call it flames coming from the bottom and then the front. So I fill in the rib cage, the right side, and then move my way over to the bottom. And then the left. And what I'm really doing is just filling it in as much as I can so, you know, I have an idea of where all the, the, the whole shape is and the outline is. Adding some more highlights at the top by shoulder blades. And then here on the side, I'm really kind of making little jagged lines creating little folds and everything for his his jacket, his cloak that he's wearing. And I try to keep the lines as tight as possible at the beginning so that way when I continue adding more detail and drawing more um, more uh, more um, artwork on top of it and laying more paint it still remains sharp and uh, has all the detail on there. So I'm using whites on the top of the shoulders. I'm adding some reducer here. So the reduction ratio is about 20%. I usually start about that much. It keeps it fairly uh, opaque, but at the same time, I can shoot the color out very well and still get my, a lot of control and uh, a lot of crisp lines. So I'm airbrushing a lot of the shadows underneath. Some of the flames start to emerge. I have a little tiny kind of flame stencil I use too. And this is a time lapse sped up, you know, obviously. But uh, I'm always kind of uh, looking backwards towards the canvas to really see what I need to paint next. To kind of pull back. 
So doing, I'm doing the right side of his uh, hands, the bones, and the bone structure. Adding more flames by the top of the highlights. And then the right side of the rest of his fingers. And he has like these claws, so that, that kind of drags down. But you notice I'm starting on the right side and adding the, the light kind of, uh, sh you know, highlights and kind of shading them in. I work as if I'm just using one color. So say if I'm painting this entire thing just with white, I'll paint all the detail that I possibly can with white. So that's how I look at it. I don't really don't look at it as um, just painting the white what's white on the picture. The whole thing is painted completely. And that's a good tip too. Because you know when you start out you try to like just see the colors and paint one color at a time. Um, but this process is how I start every single painting I do. And every single painting you see on my channel is going to be painted this way. Because this is just... Um, you know, the, I guess you'd call it the, the process of painting, the academic process or whatever. Adding a white hot light at the top of his sickle. Just really pay attention to that reference photo. And um, bring some of those flames up there again. So the right side, the top of his hood. If you notice, all the white highlights um, are coming from the top down. So the, the top, the highest part of his hood, the highest part of his shoulder blades, the front of the skull, 